Hi everybody and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History's Fae Film Fashion Series. You might want to watch this episode from behind the couch because it's our Halloween special. In this episode I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favourite horror movie looks. Usually in the UFH I like to include at least a little academic content but in this episode there's none. In fact I even forgot to discuss Freddy Krueger. But to be honest with you, I don't really like his look. I think that kind of punky striped sweater with the trilby doesn't work. Although I do like his scary knife glove. All right, let's start our countdown. Coming in at number 10. This guy, yes, from Friday the 13th, Jason. I've never seen Friday the 13th. I have no idea what it's about, but I do know that Jason goes around killing people. Whenever um, my friend Eurydice and I do face masks together when we're having a girly night in, we always remark that we look like Jason. Forget the mask. Take a look at his very distressed neutral top. This was in uh, 1980. This jacket was so far ahead of fashion's curve. Don't we love distressed menswear? Well, designer Greg Laurel certainly does. Take a look at his collection for New York Fashion Week 2018. Jason would have loved this. So at number 10 from a movie I have never seen is Jason Voorhees. Is he called Voorhees? I wonder if I've seen the movie that comes in at number 9. At number nine, we have a movie that I've never seen all the way through. The Shining. I have tried to watch The Shining on multiple occasions, but it's just too scary for me. Chiefly because of these scary, creepy twins who always remind me of the scary, creepy twins in this Diane Arbus photograph, even though I'm sure all four of these girls were absolutely adorable. However, I do really like these little party dresses that the girls in The Shining are wearing. Now, you may think The Shining could never have influenced fashion, but guess what? Here are just some runway images inspired by a movie so scary I've never been able to see it. And look, here's Johnny. I think he says that in the movie, doesn't he? I've never seen it. Moving on. Coming in at number eight. A movie I have seen, even though it terrified me to death. From 1974, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Leatherface. I cannot believe I'm saying the word Leatherface in a UFH. But listen, sure, Leatherface was terrifying and scary and totally demented. However, nobody ever talks about how trendy he was with his messy mop of curly hair, his tight jacket and his thin, loose tie. Basically, Leatherface was doing punk rock. Leatherface could have been in The Clash. Terribly trendy. He should have gone to Detroit and joined a punk rock band or gone to New York, hung out at CBGB's. Coming in at number seven, who could it be? I can't remember. I can't remember who's in the countdown. Yes, it's Damien from 1976's The Omen. I can't stay mad at Damien for long. He was just too cute. All Damien needed was a bit of a telling off. He needed to be sent to his room for an hour and then a hot chocolate and a big cuddle. He was too cute. He makes this list, however, because he was possibly the most formal five-year-old of all time. He's always in a little suit and tie. Take a look at him here. He looks like he could be a lounge singer at the bar of a Holiday Inn circa 1976 with his ruffled shirt, his waistcoat and his little bow tie. I am loving his look here, that mid-70s wide lapel and the thick knotted tie. And who doesn't love his floppy hair? He was so adorable. I just wasn't scared of Damien. If you wonder what this little lad looks like now, he looks like this. Exactly the same, basically. 
Who is coming in at number six? <laughs> I'm sorry. What the hell am I doing in this episode? From 1988's Child's Play, it's Chucky, the demented doll. Why Chucky? Well, come on. Nobody exemplifies 1980s multicolored fashion more than Chucky. Basically, he was the United Colors of Benetton. So 80s. Coming in at number five, we're going all the way back to 1922. With Nosferatu. He was Trey Chic. Sure, his teeth needed a bit of work. Yes, his fingernails could have used a trim, but come on. What about that beautiful double-breasted frock coat with the cord fastenings. He was minimal, he was chic, and it's no wonder that both retail and runway go back to Nosferatu time and time again. In at number four, let's write a letter to Daddy. With Whatever Happened to Baby Jane 1962, one of my all-time favorite movies, a camp caper to be sure, but it did start out with the intention of being a genuine horror movie. Yes, we all love Jane's Edwardian-style little girl dress, but what I like is her day wear, this 1930s look. Remember, Jane Hudson was trapped in the past and was supposed to be wearing her 1930s wardrobe. And I genuinely love this dress. Here is a rare colour photograph of it. This beautiful slinky 1930s dress with a draped neckline. I would genuinely love to own that dress. And by the way, Blanche, we got rats in the cellar. Moving on. At number three, from 1973, The Wicker Man. Oh my God, this is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. In fact, I think The Wicker Man deserves its own UFH because it had such fantastic costumes, set design, etc. But the reason it makes it so high on this list is because of Christopher Lee's rather interesting take on cross-dressing when the villagers do that scary fertility march or whatever it is. Here is another shot. Yes, it's very creepy, but it's also completely early 70s. The turtleneck in that kind of mustard hue under the floaty dress with, of course, that severely flat center-parted Susan Day hair. His makeup was a little off, but come on, this outfit would have delighted any young woman in the early 1970s. Coming in at number two, I am not proud. I am not proud that this is on my list. I can't believe I put this on my list. Oh God, Todd Browning's freaks. Do not see this movie. Just don't see it. Just don't see it, because once you have seen Todd Browning's Freaks, there is no unseeing Todd Browning's Freaks. Do not see it unless you absolutely love slinky, sexy 1930s costumes, like I do. Freaks had some wonderful wardrobe in it. Take a look at that slinky, sexy kimono that Olga Baklanova wears. When I first saw Freaks, I absolutely fell in love with this suit, worn by Layla Hyams as Venus. It was a slinky black 1930s crepe, two-piece suit with very tight sleeves and velvet piping. There's another shot of it. I became obsessed with this suit and spent ages on vintage sites and on eBay looking for a replica of this suit. Couldn't find one. I might have to have one made, but imagine I'd have to go to a seamstress or a dressmaker and get them to watch Freaks. I couldn't do that to anyone. Don't watch Freaks. And I'm really sorry that I mentioned it. Oh my goodness, this episode. All right. At number one, coming in at number one, 
come on. There can only be number one. We're talking chic. We're talking high fashion and anti-fashion. We are talking that creepy girl entity from The Ring. You know, that creature that crawls out of the television. This was so terrifying, but come on. Her look was fantastic. It was high fashion, anti-fashion. We're talking Ray Kawakubo, Comme de Garçon. We're talking early 80s Yamamoto. And if you think that long hair falling in your face so that you can't see would never be a runway look, you're wrong. Well, I hope you enjoyed that absolutely ridiculous ridiculous episode of UFH. You can contact me to complain through my website, amandahalley.com. Join our Facebook group where we're sure to have a happy Halloween. I'm back every week with new episodes on the ultimate fashion history. At least I try to be back every week. So just click the little circle to subscribe. And until then, forgive me and happy Halloween.